Hey guys, so it's been a really long time since I last did a video. I actually can't remember how long ago my last video was, so I, I apologise profusely for the fact that I haven't actually kept up to date with everything that's been going on. I think my last hormone update I did was about six months, and I'm now ten months on from that. So, sincerest apologies. Let's try and do a, a, a catch up of some kind. So, I'm now 16 months on testosterone. Over the past however many months it's been since I last spoke to you, I haven't actually noticed many more changes, or severe changes, shall I say. My facial hair's grown in nicely. Um, it just happens to be that I've shaved it when I actually wanted to. But oh well, it's, yeah, I do have facial hair. My voice has obviously become manly as such. I don't get misgendered at all anymore. My body seems to have sort of broadened out nicely. Um, I don't know if it, my shoulders look broad to you. It just, yeah. Uh, I've lost quite a bit of weight. Some of it due to relatively good eating and I think the rest of it's due to the testosterone. It's, I've lost it mainly from sort of a bit of everywhere and it's all slowly piling onto my stomach instead but I'm losing it off my arse which was the main place where I wanted to lose it because that was just huge. I also apologise for the stiffling because I've got a really bad cold but if I don't do this filming today I'm just going to keep putting it off and off and off and I can't do that. So last few months what's been going on? So back at the beginning of the year I went to see Mr Berry, I can't remember if I filled you in on this bit or not but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I went to see Mr Berry for top surgery, Mr. Miles Berry in London at the London Welbeck. We talked, he played around, he sort of got to know me and my body as such, took pictures, all of that, and decided he was happy to do surgery, which is fine. I needed to get a letter from haematology for him, as you remember with my whole blood stuff. So he just wanted an idea from them what to do if things were to go wrong. Absolutely fine. So got all of that sorted, had a few mishaps in the middle, falling out with people in my life due to drama, really, which did put surgery off for a little while, but only a month, so that was good. I was originally booked in to go for surgery 1st of June. Due to money issues, that wasn't possible, so I had to basically cancel it as such, and then when there was a more financially available option I then rebooked surgery for the 10th of August with Mr Berry and as you can see it is now the 15th of August and I have actually had my top surgery which is amazing so I feel like I should talk about that I haven't yet seen the results that's happening tomorrow I was gonna save this video for after but I thought I'd rather do a separate video catching up and a separate video for talking all about top surgery and doing Q's and A's and whatever. I've, I'm have i now five days post-op with Mr. Berry from London Welbeck. Oh, it feels amazing. It honestly, it, it, I don't, I don't think I can describe how amazing it feels and every time I get excited the camera keeps bouncing and it's brilliant. But I just, I don't know, oh, it's, it's weird, like feeling it's sort of you can't really feel anything because it's binder it's numb it's sort of i don't know hold on hold on let me just okay so as you can see still wearing binder i'm not gonna show any lower because it gets a bit horrific going further down um so yeah binder it's you can feel all of the bandaging underneath and i've sort of I'll move it down a tiny bit and you can see what i'm going on about so just avoid the hips area. So I can't feel from that point all the way around here. So I'm just trying to feel where I can't. Yeah, so basically this this whole circle here on both sides can't feel like completely numb. But I can feel thicker bandages in places where I'm guessing are my nipples which are sort of there which is 
I could be wrong, I don't know. As I said, I can only really feel. Um, <sighs> that's normal. Hey. Um, so yeah, I haven't really, I'm going to put my top back on, because, so. I haven't really had pain as such. It's sort of, oh, it's hard to describe. It's not, it's not like a, you know when you cut yourself and it really stings a lot. You kind of expect it to be that, but like a hell of a lot worse. And it's not. The thing that hurts the most is the binder actually crushing my ribs and my back. Like, it, it's just, it's constantly there. And I get little twinges. I, uh, mainly, I haven't had anything on the right side. But on my left side, I just, I keep getting these little twinges and it's really, it's weird. And mum describes it as nerve pain, and it probably is. But because I've never felt it before, I've no idea what I'm feeling. That's just, yeah, it's weird. But the main pain, as I said, is is the crushing of the binder, because I find it I find it really contradicting that when you first start wearing a binder, you, you look up the rules of, of binder wearing, and you find that you're not allowed to wear it for more than eight hours a day, don't wear it when you're sleeping, and yet I've got to wear this binder 24-7, literally 24-7, and it's, it's crushing me, and it's killing me, and it's so going to be worth it in the end, but at the moment, oh my god, does it hurt. I'm finding it really hard to sing at the moment. I know it sounds a little bit off topic, but because I can hardly get a breath in, my singing just isn't on point. I've been trying, and I've found that actually straining to hit notes as well, I can feel it all pulling. And it's really weird, because you, you don't realise how much you use your chest muscles for everything. Literally everything. I mean, I <laughs> I struggled picking up a glass of water. I mean, it's just, it's it's really weird, and it gets it gets more difficult as the days are going on because I can do more, but at the same time I'm scared I'm doing too much. Like I picked up my laptop earlier, and it's it's not a light laptop, and I sort of thought to myself, like, am I allowed to pick this up? Like it's it's actually quite like even when I'm well, I remember how heavy it is. And it's scary because I don't I don't feel any problems, but because I can't see what's going on, I don't know if I'm actually causing any problems by doing these things. So it's scary. It is a really scary process. It's also a really boring process. This this is my room, as you've seen on plenty of other videos. It's changed a little bit. I've been packing to move. This is basically the four walls that I see pretty much all of the time, just because I'm either so tired from doing pretty much nothing, or there's just there's nothing else really to do like I'll go downstairs I'll make myself some food I'll sit in the lounge for a little while and then I'll come back up and I've just been playing Xbox reading books watching TV binge watching TV series recording videos playing my ukulele that's another thing playing instruments obviously I can't play my drums that's way too much I mean even air drumming it absolutely kills so um I learned that lesson ukulele I can play at a really weird angle if I'm holding it down by my legs, not up by my chest. As soon as it touches my chest, I, I, it's a horrible pain that shoots through me. So obviously can't play the guitar because that's way too big. And I miss that because I miss just playing and getting my feelings out by strumming through it. I tried playing the piano yesterday, and uh, it's all right as long as I stay around middle C. It's as I start branching out and I start opening my chest, it starts getting really sore. So. <laughs> I have to be really careful with that, so I've decided piano isn't a good idea at the moment, I'll give it a bit more time. I've only been post-op for five days, I really probably shouldn't even be trying to do these things, but as I said, I don't know. I don't know what I can do, I don't know what I can't do, and I don't know unless I try, so I'm trying. I had two good friends come and visit me yesterday morning, which was lovely, and they brought me cake, and it was the most amazing cake on earth, and I think all of it's gone now which isn't surprising because they know how much I love cake, which is why they brought cake. And it was just, it was really nice to see them. It was nice, it was nice to have some visitors. People just sort of check up on me, see how I'm doing and bring cake. And yeah, no, it was, it was really nice to see them. It was nice to just hang out with people and catch up and feel like I'm doing something normal. Because I'm, I'm missing talking to people. I mean, all of my really close, well, pretty much all of my really close friends are on holiday at the moment, like different holidays, different. Yeah, it's weird because because they're all on holiday. I've got no one actually interested in talking to me at the moment, which is it's lovely. It's not lovely. So yeah, it's nice to have some visitors because I'm feeling a little bit lonely in these four walls, this little box that I'm stuck in. My brother's been lovely. He's he's really been looking after me. 
taken the piss, but he's really been looking after me. He's been an absolute sweetheart, actually. Mum and Nana, obviously, coping well, taking the piss, obviously. But they're coping well, looking after me. So, all is well in Alex's world. For once, kind of, I think. I'm not sure. So, I've decided that... <laughs> I, try, I tried songwriting. It's obviously not for me. Like, I can, I can write the... I can write lyrics and I can I can write, write like the bass music but when it comes to actually finding a melody for the lyrics there's nothing so I've given up on the fact that I thought I could songwrite but I can write poems I do enjoy writing poems it's my way of getting a release from everything that I'm feeling so I just get to write down all of my feelings and just put it on a piece of paper in front of me and I can, I can either save it or I can get rid of it or I can show people or whatever and a lot of people that I've sort of shown poems to or one example for my mum's 50th sorry, I mean to tell your age she, she, well I threw a massive party for her and I decided to write a poem as my speech because we did speeches because we're awesome like that and everybody loved it and I really wanted to find that poem speech so that I could record it and so the whole world can see it but I can't find it anywhere and it's really starting to drive me insane but it's got to be somewhere so I will find it and I will record it but instead I have decided to start recording all of my poems that I'm actually writing and putting them on the Trans Life channel in a completely separate category just as just for other people to either connect with or I don't know I don't I don't know what you really do with poems you, you sort of you, you you feel them. It's kind of like with music, but not as catchy. I'm going to put them onto the YouTube. I think I think it would be good. I think it would be good. I'm going to warn you now. They, a lot of them are quite depressing. I tend to only really write poems when I'm in a very down mood. Because that's when I, I need my release. So I'm warning you now. Uh, trigger warning for swearing in some of them. Just, yeah, down moods. Also, maybe if you're squeamish you'll understand when you hear them i hope that somebody gets something out of them because i enjoy writing them um to an extent but it makes me feel better and as i'm being so open with my transition i'm basically putting my whole life on a on a platter in front of the whole world for you to see i feel i might as well show you every aspect of it and the parts of me that a lot of people don't want the public to see feel that doing that it makes me more of a person and you can see that not everything in my life is hunky-dory you've seen over the past year that I, I go through difficulties life throws absolute rubbish at me but I think that this will be good for me and for everyone so you can get to know me a bit better which is difficult as I'm this side of the screen but I think I'm gonna leave it on that, and that's quite a that was quite a depressing ending. I feel bad. I don't I don't mean for it to be a depressing ending. I had surgery. I mean, come on, I, I should be excited. I am excited. I'm really excited. There will be another video soon, um, of of me doing video stuff, not my poems. That was probably my reveal. I'm hoping that someone is coming with me tomorrow. Hoping either my best friend or my brother or both of them or someone else. It could be someone else entirely. I might just pick up a stranger off the street, uh, sort of get to Victoria and be like, you come with me. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, so hopefully I'll get that filmed and you can see me. I will probably cry. I'm going to warn you. I will probably cry. Don't judge me. But yeah, I think that's, that's a better note to end on. I will speak to you all soon. As always, been a while. I've forgotten what I say. I think it's the whole like, subscribe, sub, sub, subscribe. Don't forget to follow all of the little social media accounts my sniffles coming back because i i don't yeah i don't have time to do these videos all the time so i'll do instagram snapchat do little updates on facebook i do tweet every now and again but that's sort of i'm not into tweeting i don't i still don't quite understand it fully but i'll get there so yeah i'll speak to you all soon and i hope that you will take care and you're always welcome to message me if you ever want to talk if you want to ask me questions if you just need someone to talk to shoulder to cry on you need a giggle whatever just give me a message. I will be right here and I will talk to you. And yeah, I'll talk to you soon. So see you all later.